All right. What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode Podcast Weekly Real Estate Tip. And today I'm here to talk to you about how to dominate your real estate goals in 2023, even if the real estate market crashes. And everything I'm going to be breaking down here on this podcast today applies to agents, team leaders, and brokerage owners. And what I mean by this is it doesn't matter if your business is going after and getting more buyers and sellers or recruiting more agents, or a combination of both. Everything we're breaking down, they are fundamentals that uh, apply to increasing sales and doing more business and will be applied to, again, buyer, sellers, agent recruiting, and so forth. Now, recently, I've been making a lot of content. And when I say recently, really over the past year or so, you know, making a lot of different content on how to go out there and, and grow, shift, and adapt to the changing market. When it comes to identifying the ideal client, who the market is good for, um, how to go out there and create UAE, uh, unique selling propositions, how to adapt to these increasing interest rates. So I've created a lot of different videos and, and podcasts. Um, you know, over the past year or so, you know, on specific strategies for that. So if you if you want to check those out, if you haven't watched those, I highly recommend that you go check those out. You know, today we're going very high level. We're going to be talking about activity, action. We're going to be talking about tracking. We're going to be talking about systems, you know, things that will allow you from a high level to go out there. And again, make sure that you dominate your real estate goals here in 2023, regardless if the market crashes or not. Now, real quick, before we jump in, if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a huge favor, make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you do not miss out on future releases of this content. If you're enjoying this content, please hit that like button and drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, make sure that you guys are checking out gsdmode.com, which is my personal website for this podcast. On there, there's a bunch of additional training resources. You got my free ebook, which is uh, 42 of my top real estate tips. Um, a lot of great scripts in there, strategies to go out there and dominate your business. So a lot of cool free tools, resources at gsdmode.com mode.com. All right, so let's jump on in. All right, so now the first thing is to understand just because of the climate and the environment that we are in. And I know that this isn't what everybody wants to hear right now, but look, I'm not here to tell anybody what they want to hear. I'm here to tell you what I believe that you need to hear. And this isn't just something, this isn't just my belief. This isn't just things that my team and I are doing, you know, to go out there and, and we're on to, on pace to do just under 5 million in gross commission, uh, commission income year in 2022 and continue to grow our business during the shifting market. But every other every other top producing agent, team leader, and brokerage owner that I'm talking to, having conversations with, whether it be my friends, guests that I'm having on the podcast, you know, are all, all abiding by this same thing. You know, there's there's nothing, there's no magic pill. There's nothing sexy, you know, when it comes to this. There's no secret. You know, it just comes back down to attaching those fundamentals and really going out there and putting in more effort uh, uh, than, than potentially ever before. And it just, it's just the reality of the times that we're in. You guys like, look, you just got to understand what the overall economy that we are in. Um, the economy is also, you know, it's not getting better. So with the overall time that we are in, if we look at this, you know, sales are down at record lows. When I say sales are down at record lows, I mean, we still obviously have prices, you know, that, that are very high and inflated in a lot of areas and, you know, very low affordability, when you look at the percentage of people, low percentage of people in any given market that can afford the real estate, you know, um, um, in any given market because of the high interest rates and, and this crazy real estate bubble that we are in, you know, so there's just less transactions taking place. You have less people that can afford real estate and you have less people that are just wanting to go out there and buy real estate. We have a lot less investors purchasing real estate right now, especially in my market in Phoenix, Arizona. You know, dude, we had investors coming out of the woodwork about almost 40%, you know, between 35 to 40% uh, over the last couple of years of all transactions, even in single family attached in my market over the last couple of years were investors and primarily these big, large institutional investors, I buyers and so forth. Dude, those of all, they just all dropped off a cliff. Like they are non-existent in this market. I don't want to say they're not buying, but it's, you know, went from buying a shit ton to not buying much. You know, so you've got investors buying less, plus people right now when you just go overall consumer confidence, you know, um, and again, whether that be a combination of they can't afford to buy or they're just wanting to wait or whatever it is, we just have less transactions taking place. And I know every market's different, but I'm just going to speak to my market right now here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've got overall sales volume down about 50%, meaning the amount of transactions that are taking place on a month over month basis. So when I look at that, I'm like, okay, well, you know, yeah, we have agent count starting to drop off, but agent count hasn't dropped off by 50% yet. There will come that time where the agent count uh, is a drop off of agent count, or, you know, in a combination of, 
agents that drop out of the industry along with those that are disengaged and not taking action will outweigh the lesser transactions taking place. But that's not the case right now, right? So, so we've got about 30% of agents that have dropped out this year in our market, but we got sales down about 50%. So when I look at that, I'm like, to me, it's just common sense then. If, if there's 50% less sales happening, 50% less you know people willing to transact right now, I got to go down and double down. That means I got to do generate twice the amount of leads and I got to go out there and do twice the amount of follow-up to convert the same amount of business. So it's just having this understanding. This is just one of these times, you guys, where, where we got to roll up our sleeves and we got to get to work, man. We got to go out there and, and do whatever we can to, to survive. Um, Cause in order to thrive, you got to survive. Now, when I'm talking about, like when I'm talking about doubling down, that would be just to, you know, like whatever your 2023 goals were or, or your 2023 goals are, Right. And whatever your numbers are, and we'll go deeper into this here, but whatever your numbers are historically to make that a reality, just double those. Right. It's just what it's going to take. It's going to take double the amount of leads, double the amount of, of follow up, double the amount of effort. Not saying that it's going to take double the amount of follow up to convert each lead, but it's going to take, you know, double the amount of leads combined with the maybe the regular fault that you're doing per lead. So it's ends up being double both, you know, to go out there and get the same result. And then if you want to scale from there, you just need to account for that. So as an example, and this is just what I'm planning for and what I'm doing in my own business and what we've been doing and currently doing that's allowing us to go out there and still grow and succeed even in these changing times. You know, for, the, for, I don't know, the last probably about four years now, we've been converting one out of 42 Facebook leads. Okay, so right now I look at this. Okay, so going into 2023, I just have the understanding that, man, I'm going to have to, I'm going to get one closing per 84 uh, Facebook leads when historically I've been at one out of 42. Now, to me, I'm all about hope for the best, plan for the worst. Hopefully the numbers aren't that bad. Hopefully they're not that ugly. But if I prep for that, if I plan for that, if my efforts and actions you know, are, are, are at that level, and then it doesn't take that, well, then I'll overshoot my goals and crush my goals you know, and just go out there and do that much more. You know, but again, with the overall transaction count falling and continuing to to fall probably in 2023, I know it's fallen here in 2022, but it's probably going to get less and, and worse and, you know, more ugly like the, this, this economic climate that we're in isn't getting better. And this isn't, these aren't quick fixes, you know, so these are, this is just, and I'm not trying to play chicken little sky is falling. You know, this isn't clickbait bullshit. This is just me being upfront, honest and talking about what I'm doing to go out there and prep and plan. And when I look at everything that's taking place and read the writing on the wall, I'm like, okay, like this, I don't think that there's any way that this is going to get better in 2023. It's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Now, I don't know how bad this is going to get, but this is just me prepping for 2023. Then I'll assess 2023 and then prep for 2024. You know, so, so just having that understanding and planning for that. However, just because we're talking about doubling down on your lead gen efforts and doubling down on your lead follow-up efforts doesn't necessarily mean that you need to go out there and work twice as much. Doesn't even mean that you may even need to work harder necessarily than you are right now. Yeah, you're going to have to work hard, but you got to also be intelligent. You got to be smart with this. And that's what I really want to cover today is about how to go out and operate our business in a very intelligent way so we can go out there and double our lead gen, double our lead follow-up without having to double our hours or maybe even keeping our hours the same and not having to double our ad spend. Maybe we can even keep our ad spend the same, but still double down on those different things. So it's about working hard and working smart. All right, so in order to do this, first step here, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I know I'm looking down a lot because I got two pages of notes here because I don't want to miss anything and I want to stay on track. All right, so the first thing is tracking your numbers. Now, when it comes to tracking, I know that this isn't the fun, sexy thing that people like to talk about, especially in real estate. I know that we like sales. We like, you know, we, we like the action, man. We don't like spreadsheets. You know, I get that. I understand that. However, if you want to grow, scale your business, like the only way to become a, a, a great operator is to know the numbers and the details and the data of your business. You must learn to love tracking. I shouldn't even say love to love, learn to love tracking. You just must learn to, you know, to go out there and track and, and, and do it and uh, be willing to do it um, because you can't be committed to your real estate business if you don't know your numbers. It's, it's just like it, to me, it's the, the entry level of commitment. I always know if somebody's truly committed to their business or not based on, are they actually tracking their data? Are they tracking their numbers? So, and you don't need anything fancy for this. Um, and as I go down to this and through this, you'll understand why this is so important. All right. But you, it becomes an impossibility to make smart strategic uh, decisions inside of our inside our businesses if we are if we don't know this if we don't know the data if we don't know the details if we're not tracking this data um uh to 
you know, a very, very detailed level. Now, you don't need specialized systems for this. You know, I, I personally don't use special systems. I use Google Drive trackers, dude, it's free. Everybody's got a Google Drive account or can go out there and get a Google Drive account, get a Gmail. It's got Google Drive in there. I just use Google spreadsheets. Well, Josh, I don't know how to build trackers. I don't know Excel. Okay, well, you can go spend 30 minutes on a YouTube video, you know, learn, you know, learn how to build these out, learn the formulas. It's exactly what I had to do. I wasn't a spreadsheet guy. I hated all this shit. In the beginning too. Now I'm obsessed with it. I love it because I've understood the power that it brings inside my business. Now, here's the thing per lead source. Here's what I want you to be tracking. Here's what's important. So separate this out per lead source that you're working with. Um, so we got per lead source. we got the number of leads. You got your cost per lead. Um, or now I know, understand that not all leads have a cost associated to it. So then from there, you want to know the action taken per lead and or per leads. So as an example, my open houses, I mean, yeah, we invest in open house equipment, but then once we have the open house equipment, it's, it's cost me time. It's not costing me money, but I need to be tracking on average and know on average, how many leads on average do I get per open house? Right. Um, and then from there, we'll start breaking that down on how many leads uh, equate to a closing. So then we can equate to how many open houses that we need to do and so forth. So I want to be, you know, tracking, okay, well, how many leads am I getting on each open house that I'm doing? Um, so we're going to look at, um, uh, either your your so number of leads, then we're going to look at cost per lead um, or action taken per lead. Like I mentioned, like an open house event, or maybe you're doing a networking event. Okay. How many leads are you getting on your average workshop or an average networking event? You know, whatever that may be, you know, uh, 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 with prospecting based activities. All right. So then from there, we're looking at your number of reach outs. So we're also going to track your different reach outs. Now, when I'm talking about reach outs, your know, reach out, the way I look at reach outs and define a reach out is this is my attempt to, to get a lead to have a conversation with me, right? This is a whole point of a reach out. Like when you get a lead in your system, the whole point of having that lead in your system is to set an appointment. That is it. It's the only reason that they live inside of our system. By system, I mean our CRMs, right? Um, so, so I'm going to be reaching out, obviously, to go out there and try to set that appointment. Now, when we're talking about reach outs, there's a lot of different reach outs that we do that you can do that I personally do. Look, man, I'm, I'm, I have a, a you know, thousand day long email text drip uh, plans going out. I have mass emails going out. I have property alerts going out. All of those different things. For me, I'm not counting those. Yeah, I'm tracking those and, and, and paying attention to those, but those aren't the main reach outs that I'm tracking. When I'm talking about reach outs, look at and identify what are the main reach out methods that uh, uh, lead to conversations that then lead to you setting appointments. So for me, it's phone calls, number one, and then personalized video text messages, number two. Phone calls trump everything else in my business as far as like, it's like, hey, all that stuff is great. All those emails, all those text messages, even video text messages, um, which, are, which are very powerful, you know, but ends up being those video text messages then lead to us jumping on a phone call. That's where we set appointments. So I'm tracking, for me, I track the two biggest reach out KPIs, key performance indicators that lead to the highest percentage of appointments set inside my business, which again, number one is phone calls. Number two is uh, uh, personalized video text messages. All right. So then from there, we're tracking number of conversations. So I'm doing X amount of, you know, I got X amount of leads coming in. I'm doing X amount of reach outs. Well, how many conversations am I having? And when you're tracking this, dude, I recommend it. Just keep it simple. Like for me, a, a conversation is if they pick up the phone or if they reply to that text message, like to me, and, and it doesn't matter if it's the wrong number, if they tell me to fuck off, piss off, if they're, you know, like I, I don't operate in the gray. To me, it's just cut and dry. You know, reach out is a phone, like I do the phone ring or I sent a video, a personalized video text message. A conversation is they answered that phone or, or, you know, they replied to that text message. Okay. So then from there, we've got number of conversations. Then we got number of appointments set. When I'm speaking of appointments set, I'm talking about um, you set an appointment for a buyer consultation, a listing consultation, or an agent recruit meeting. Um, but the, the like everybody's on the same page. We know what's going on in that meeting. Yeah, right. Like I'm there to go out there. Like we set the appointment to do a buyer consultation. I'm going to present, you know, my, my presentation. I'm going to pitch my buyer broker agreement, you know, or my listing agreement, you know, and so forth. Right. So that's what I'm talking about appointment set. So I'm not talking about, okay, we, you know, once they become a client, every time that we meet up to go show homes, like you can go out and track those things. There's nothing wrong with those, but that's not what we're talking about here. All right. So we got number of appointments set. Then we got number of conductions. You need to know your different ratios, you know, when it comes to this. So I set these appointments. How many of those actually showed, you know, industry average is about 50%. You know, if you're really good and you get a really good uh, uh, appointment confirmation cadence, well, you can get this up to 75%. And the reason why we want, I mean, we want to track all of these 
So, so we know the total amount of energy and effort it, uh, from you know, lead to closing. Um, but then this also allows us to identify where we need to improve inside of our business. You know, like if I have one of my agents and they're like, hey, I want to increase my business. The first thing that I do is I start breaking down their trackers and looking at, okay, well, well, inside here, like where are they short? Are they short on their appointment set to conduction ratio? Are they short on their conduction to client ratio or client to closing ratio? You know, we can make massive swings on improving their business by just increasing each of these areas, just a few percent, right? It makes a massive, massive difference. All right. So then from their number of clients, um, and for me, you know, again, I'm, you can track this, like you, you, it doesn't matter what your definitions are. I'm just sharing mine with you in case it helps, but I do believe that you need to be very clear on, on how you define these certain things. So that way you're tracking the same way every single time. Um, so for me, a client is a signed listing agreement, or it is a signed buyer broker agreement where we have a prequal in place. And so with a buyer, like if I don't have a signed buyer broker agreement or that we don't have a prequal in place, they're not a buyer client to me. That's just a lead that maybe I'm taking an you know, extra added risk on. All right. So then from them, tracking number of closings um, and then obviously my dollar amount per closing. So we start breaking that out. Again, that's per lead source. So to recap, we're looking at number of leads. We're looking at cost per lead and or actions taken per lead, number of reach outs, number of conversations, number of appointments set, number of appointment conductions, number of, of closings, and then what our revenue is per closing. So then we can figure out what our cost per acquisition is or and or we can also figure out and calculate and, and put a dollar amount to our time based on those activities. Like if you're doing open houses, prospecting based stuff. Um, the other thing that I recommend that you track inside your business is the percentage of buyers versus sellers and not just so the number of, of you know transactions, how many buyer transactions versus seller transactions, what the percentage of that is in your business. But then also from a dollar standpoint, like no, okay, well, how many commissions have come in from the buy side? How many from the sell side? And then of course, we're going to break that down per lead source. But this then allows you to allocate which side of your business that you're going to scale up. Okay, do I scale up the buy side? Do I scale up the sale side? Um, and then from there, which lead sources, you know, do I scale up from, you know, dumping more money into them? You know, we're talking about doubling your, your lead gen efforts and your follow-up efforts. Well, which ones do you double down on? You know, which ones are providing the best ROI from a financial standpoint, which ones are providing a best ROE from, you know, an energy standpoint on, on, you know, those that are prospecting based, you know, it used to be back in the day, you know, 20, 30 years ago. Well, and, and even some that have this mindset still today of, you know, like, oh, dude, you, you, you like, you want to be a mega agent. Like you got to go out there and list and, and you got to, you know, list to last and, you know, all mega producers are, are big listers. I mean, that's just absolute utter bullshit today. Right. Like, like it used to be that you needed listings to go out there and because you had the, the, you know, the leads that would come in or you had leads that come in from listings. Now I don't, I don't need any listings to go out there. I don't need, you know, sign calls. Um, I, I go out there and generate massive amounts of leads, you know, with uh, buyer ads and just through the IDX, I don't even have to have a listing to go out there and advertise this stuff, right? Um, um, so, you know, no longer is that the case. And then this whole leverage standpoint, you know, yeah, if, if you individually as an individual agent have 50 buyers and you have no help, and then you, you like, that's going to be very tough to manage, but you probably can pull off and manage 50 listings, you know? Um, um, so I get from that standpoint, you know, the, the whole leverage component. However, and we just see this over and over and over, right? With the right automation and with the right team set up and, and, you know, the right admin set up and scaling through showing agents and so forth. Like you can scale the buy side every bit as much, if not more so, and more profitably than you can the list side. Now, I'm not saying one is better than the other. What I'm saying is you need to understand where your strengths are inside your own business. Do you absolutely 100% you know, can can go out there and create a mega team doing a thousand plus units a year, just focusing on nothing but the buy side. You know, right? Um, I mean, this year, you know, we're on track to just under five million uh, in, in GCI, and uh, sixty seven percent of our our closings this year are going to be buy side. I know we've never had it that swayed before. It just with the climate of the market, buyers are in control with our changing market, you know, but that's our main focus right now. It's like, okay, that's where the profitability is at. And I would argue that long-term focusing on the buy side is going to create a better foundation with repeat referral business over time because the, the reality is like the, the relationships are stronger. You just get more, more repeat referral business out of buy, the buy side of this business. So, and again, I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm just saying is like, you got to know your stats. You got to know your own data. That's that's going to then show you like where your strong where your strong suits are, um, um, you know what to go out there and, and scale up, scale down, and so forth. So this will allow you to focus on and scale up 
uh, what what's proven, what you what is a with a proven track record, you know, through your tracking, that works. And then to go out there and drop the bullshit, drop the wasted activities, the wasted money, the wasted time, the wasted energy, the wasted effort on the crap that's just not working. But if you don't track this data and you don't have this number, it's an impossibility. You're just throwing shit against the wall and hoping something sticks. You have no idea, you know, what what's returning, um, you know, what what a good return on your time or your money is. You can make your best guess, but I can promise you this: it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to build a long-term sustainable business by guessing. You know, like you want to have detailed data that doesn't why when it comes to this. Um, all right. So so now maybe you've never tracked before. We want to get your tracking into place right away and start doing this. Um, but then you can still go through and assess your business and just just do your best, man. Go through your old notes, go through your CRM, go through, you know, do the best of your ability with those. But right now is not the time to be experimenting on things that either aren't proven to work for you that's led to business. Um, uh, I mean, those are the things that you want to scout, things that are proven historically to work well for you or things that are just proven to work, you know, um, um, that, you know, others can, like you can have a mentor, or others can show you that these things are proven to work, plug into this model, like, but they've been proven, you know, right now I'm not going to go out there and just um, uh, apply, you know, any, any time and experimenting, you know, with the time that we're in, you know, shit, shit's uh, getting gnarly out there, right? So we want to be smart inside of our business. Okay, so that's from a tracking perspective. The next thing I want to talk about from a system perspective, so that tracking allows us to make, um, you know, intelligent decisions on what to scale up, what to scale down, um, also allows us to know on a daily basis, like, what do we need to do to be winning on a daily basis? So one of my coaching clients inside my, uh, my mastery boot camp, where well, you can check out masterybootcamp.com. If you want to learn more about that, just doing a shameless plug here. Um, you can also book a one-on-one -on -one strategy call with me. It's kind of like a mini coaching session where I tell you about the program, but we also, you know, kind of do a little bit of a deep dive into your business. There's no pressure on that. So you go to masterybootcamp.com if you want to uh, schedule that with me personally. Um, um, but, you know, I, she, she came into me and she's like, okay, hey, well, you know, based on, we walked her through a business plan and she's like, okay, based on this to hit my numbers, I need to be doing 128 reach outs a day, you know, based on her reach out methods. But she's like, you know, and, and this is, this is very common that the, a lot of, and this happens with a lot of agents on my team when they sit there and hear hundred, so 120 reach outs a day, five days a week, um, is what that breaks down to being. Cause she's going to, you know, take the weekends off from doing her actual follow-up. You know, um, uh, and this is very common on my team as well with agents on my team when they first, you know, first walk through business plans and start calculating their numbers, because we want to break this down. Well, we know from a, a you know, a, a yearly down to a monthly, down to a weekly, down to a daily basis, what you need to do to be winning. And again, it doesn't matter if you're trying to go after buyers, sellers, agent recruits. Okay, what, what are the activities that you're going to be doing to generate the leads? What do those look like? And whether it's marketing, whether it's prospecting, okay, well, what are those daily activities? How many leads per those different sources must you be getting on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Um, then from there, how many reach outs do you need to be doing? in order to go out there and have the conversations that you need to have to set the appointments that you need to set to be able to conduct the appointments to get to the clients you know i mean the, the, so all this is just re, and this is what's so cool about knowing data and, and having the data is all this is is able you're able to reverse engineer all of, all of this stuff right um okay so so but you know then from there when you hear that 120 reach outs a day so then she's like, you know, and this is where, again, a lot of my agents on my team that maybe are new or, or not just, I mean, just new to the team that haven't really business planned to this level, they start thinking about, well, I need 128 people to reach out on a daily basis. No, right? Like if I look at, let's just say it's an open house lead. Okay. Um, I got that open house lead, met him open house, put in my CRM. Let's just say I did the open house on a Saturday. Well, I'm going to start calling him that Monday. I'm going to call him on Monday. Then I'm going to call him every other day for the first 14 days then every 21 days for the first year. And that call frequency is going to exist. So I get them on the phone. We have communication going on. I've established what their goals are. I've established what their expectations, their timeframes are. Um, um, you know, then from there, I'm going to adjust accordingly. But on average, like it might be five conversations or I mean, sorry, five phone call reach outs before I finally get them on the phone. Okay, well, I get them on the phone. I might need to have five or six more conversations with them before I set an appointment. Well, it's going to take, you know, it might take five plus five to 10, you know, uh, uh, reach outs between each of those, you know, so it might take 50 reach outs to get them on the phone five times, you know, to go out there and finally set that appointment. Then let's just say they show, but let's just say they don't show. Okay, when people don't know show, you know, for appointment, which is going to happen if you're really good 25% of the time, if you're average 50% of the time, 
Um, well, then from there, I have, I have a, a 26 day, 12 touch reach out program uh, uh, process for no shows to rebook those. Six of those are automated emails. The other six of those are my phone calls. You know, so it's not, it's not unheard of, or it, it's, it's, it's very typical, you know, to go out there and have like best case, 30 different reach outs before you set an appointment, you know, and, uh, but it's not, you know, uncommon at all to have 40, 50, sometimes 60 reach outs, you know, so very quickly. So we broke it down with her you know, based on her lead sources. And I'm like, okay, you need to be averaging four leads a day, um, uh, uh, you know, seven days a week. So four leads a day, and then we can break it down. So like you're, the amount of lead flow that you have coming in will be determined on not just what your overall conversion rate is, but also the amount of reach outs that you need to be doing to, to get those conversion rates where they need to be. All right. So then from there, so that's what tracking allows you to do, right? So then from there, we're talking now about getting those supporting systems to help us go out there and be more effective, be more efficient. There's really only two things that allow you to scale in this business, which is systems and people. And I always like to start with systems because they're held a lot cheaper with people like system. I want to get my systems dialed into a point where it brings me to a capacity. And eventually I need to start delegating out tasks and plug the right people into those right systems to help me take it to the next level. But I always first look at systems to see, okay, well, how, how can I increase my capacity? How can I get more effective? How can I get more efficient through systems? Now you're tracking as a part of your system. You have your, your tracking system. Um, but then we got your CRM system, right? So, and, and I will already argue, and I'll debate anybody to this, you know, anybody on this all damn day long, that your two most important systems in your real estate business are your CRM and your tracking system, right? Tracking allows me to make those smart decisions. My CRM keeps me on task. But when you look at a system, I think of your CRM as an assistant, right? So that assistant, if you were to go out there and hire an assistant, that assistant is going to go out there and do certain activities for you instead of you doing them like that assistant's going to take those over. Um, but then from there, the tasks that the assistant can't do, that your assistant then was going to remind you to do those tasks so you don't forget and things don't slip through the crack. Well, that's what a great CRM will, will do for you. Um, um, and when I'm talking about a great CRM, I'm not talking about any specific CRMs. I mean, I've got my own biases on, on the best ones and so forth. But at the end of the day, it, it, the best CRM is the one that works best for you. Um, but what determines it and where most go wrong is they don't take the time to learn it. They don't take time to go in there and set it up correctly and feed it those right instructions. It's like if I hire an assistant, and, and I want this assistant to do all these tasks. Well, what do I need to do? Like, I got to make sure I've given my assistant the right instructions, the right processes to go out there and follow. A CRM is a system, right? Well, I got to then build in and feed that system the right instructions, the right processes, so it can go out there and do those things I need it to do. All right, so uh, real quick before I get into you know, just my recommendations here when it comes to CRM setup to allow you to be more most effective and efficient, you know, with this, I highly, highly recommend that you own your own CRM. All right. So there's a few things that I recommend everybody always owns your own CRM, your own website, your own URLs, your own emails, your own phone numbers. And if you still utilize the facts, own that, you know, I, I think it's one of the worst mistakes that you possibly can do is to accept a broker provided CRM, right? Like they then own all your data. This is your number one asset in your real estate business. Um, there's nothing more important than your CRM, the contacts in there, those relationships, um, all that hard work, somebody else owns somebody like you, it, it, like it is just a dumb ass decision. You know, now I get it, dude, if you are absolutely broke, you're brand new yet and you need to use that as a stepping stone, fine, I get that. But as soon as you possibly can, go out there and invest in your own systems. So then that way you own them. So I don't know if your brokerage goes out of business. Maybe you have a falling out. Like your business is never left in a vulnerable state. It's, it's like you own your stuff. Okay, so now let's talk about you know, again, set up, we're going to feed your CRM the right instructions. So just some, you know, kind of best practices here with this stuff. Um, and this is going to then allow you to be more efficient with your fault, have more effective fault so you can convert at a higher level, but ensure that things aren't missed, that you're staying on task, staying on track, so you can convert at the highest possible level. So your tracking allows you to know where to apply that your, your energy, your efforts to, you know, this is going to allow you to do those efforts in the most effective and efficient manner. All right, so the first thing is making sure that you've got your lead and or contact sources all laid out inside your CRM. And these are things that you got to be disciplined with, man. Like you got to, you got to learn to, you know, slow down a little bit. And when I say slow down, like make sure that you're taking the time to, you know, know your CRM, make sure you're taking the time to set it up correctly, making sure that when you are working your leads, your contacts, 
inside your CM that you're taking the time to update them appropriately. You know, because if you do that, it again, it's going to allow you to have way more effective follow-up, convert at a way higher level, be much more effective and efficient overall. All right. So um, you know, making sure that you have your lead and contact sources all fed in there. So every single lead that comes in your system, every new lead that you're feeding to your CRM, then has that original lead source associated to it or contact source associated to it. And the more, you know, kind of diligent you can be with this or the, the more detailed you can be with this, the better, you know, um, like maybe, you're, you, you know, you work with, you, you get some business from attorneys. Um, okay, well, I would, I would take it a step further. I just wouldn't put attorney you know, our attorneys, you know, I break it down. Okay, well, maybe I'm getting some from, you know, divorce attorneys, probate attorneys, different types of attorneys. Well, then I'd even take it a step further. And okay, well, so we got, you know, the probate attorney. And then what is the exact attorney's name that you're getting this from? Okay, so like I do a lot of Facebook, right? Um, uh, as far as lead gen. Um, but okay, I've got Facebook groups that I work that I get my, you know, leads from. I got Facebook Marketplace. I get deals from my own personal, you know, Facebook page and my kind of work on my Facebook, you know, social media sphere of influence. You know, then I got paid ads that that I'm getting that business from. You know, so so even from there, I'm not just going to have Facebook and put everything in a bucket. Like again, I want to know what energy efforts um, um, is leading that best result. So I'm going to segment those out. You know, if you're doing YouTube, okay, well if you have your own YouTube channel just like if you're watching this on YouTube right now, well, this is me prospecting, if you will. Like this, these aren't paid YouTube ads. These are me sitting behind the camera right now recording this. This is taking time. I'm trading time for money right now, you know, uh, 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 you know, to develop connections and get name out and all that stuff here, you know, on, on this, right? So, so, okay, you know, for that, I'd have, you know, YouTube for my channel, like which leads came in for my YouTube channel you know, from an organic standpoint. And then if you're doing, you know, YouTube, uh, uh, you know, paid ads or whatever you want to call it, you, YouTube PPC, YouTube paid ads, you know, segment those out. So being really detailed and really specific. So then that way you can always go back and again, track and understand where that first lead source came in from and making sure that you're going deep with this. You know, like one of my agents on my team who just murders it with YouTube and does a ton of business with YouTube, you know, um, uh, she discovered that, okay, a lot of her leads come in off of YouTube, like meaning, okay, they discover on YouTube, they start binging her content on YouTube. That's where they discover that, you know, she's a realtor that can help them out here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, but then they jump over to her Instagram to discover and, and figure out who is she as a person, you know, and then a lot of those initial reach outs that, you know, as far as them actually, be, you know, we, we classify as a lead coming in, come through an Instagram DM, you know, but then through, through follow-up conversations, it's like, okay, they actually you know, were originated and the first discovery happened through YouTube that reached out on Instagram was, you know, that was like a second part in the journey. So we got to know that, you know, and that's where you got to go deeper, you know, um, um, you know, with having those conversations with leads and, and so forth that are coming in and making sure that you're updating that and keeping accurate records, you know, with that. Okay. So then from there with your, so the first thing that I'm going to do, like in my CRM, my bright, bright, let's just say I have a new agent on my team, join my team. First thing we're going to do is get the contact sources that slash lead sources all set up in there. And again, going, I know I'm kind of being repetitive here, but you know, there's a difference between, okay, like referral business, you know, was this a, a you know, referral from a uh, my sphere of influence was a referral from an actual past client is an agent referral, you know, like, well, like, where did this come in from? If you're doing networking groups, breaking it down per networking group, right? Um, so then from there, once we got those fed in there, then from there, I'm going to look at, okay, well, any of those that are online that are auto ported into my CRM, so like when I do Facebook ads, for example, I have those leads auto ported to my CRM. Then I have them auto trigger off an autoresponder email and autoresponder text. So then I'm not having to be so reactive. And I don't have to worry about speed of leads so much with my online leads that are imported automatically to my CRM. They get dumped into my CRM automatically from the sources. I'm going to make sure I've got my autoresponder set up and set up correctly. So then boom, it can, you know, those can be triggered instantaneously. Um, uh, then from there, making sure that you got your drip emails and your drip text messages set up and also per lead source. You know, you got to sit there and think about this of, okay, like what, what is that? And what I recommend you guys, like just get out of, you know, blank piece of paper, go on a whiteboard and map out from A to Z when this lead source comes in, when this lead comes in from, you know, inception of lead until they become a client, like what is the perfect follow-up strategy for this? So for me, like how I follow up with an open house lead, is, is, you know, some of it's the same, but there's some differences than, than how I fall up with a Facebook lead. You know, um, how I fall up with an expired is vastly different than how I fall up with a FISBO, you know, right? Um, all of those different things. So, um, uh, but then I want to make sure I got my uh, email, automated email drips, 
and automated email text messages set up inside my CRM. So like to, to kind of you know showcase these, I get a Facebook lead ad that comes into my CRM that automatically triggers an autoresponder email and autoresponder text automatically gets set up on and triggers my thousand day long email text follow-up sequence, right? And then on top of that, the next layer to this is it automatically triggers and, and tasks me with my call tasking drips. Because remember, as I said earlier, like thinking about your CRM as an assistant, that assistant is going to do things for me. Instead of me doing those tasks, it's going to do the things that it can do for me, the things that it can't do for me. It's not going to do my calls for me. I'm going to do my calls and I don't want anybody else doing my calls. I'm going to do my calls, right? That's my, my highest income producing activity I possibly can do is my lead follow-up calls. Unless you have, you know, rock star ISA, but you know, you know, you know, whatever, that's a different topic. Um, all right. So, so you're doing your, those calls. Well, I got this thing over here tasking me. So then I don't have to think about when I need to do them. My system just says, okay, hey, you got to do this call. You got to call this person on this day. This is what you need to say. Now I take it a step further when I set up my drip tasks, right. Um, for my call, like anything that anything my CRM needs, like that I need to do, Right, I'm going to set up drip tasks for myself inside my CRM to task me. So I just go in each day. So I just click a button uh, for that that drip task. Um, go in there each day. It tells me the tasks I need to do. I set up explicit instructions of what I need to do. Like to the point, even though this might sound goofy, but even though it's me doing the calls, you know, right? Like with my own leads, I put. I like, dude, I have on. Okay, here's the purpose of the call. Here's the goal of the call. Um, here, if they answer the phone, here's the script. If they don't answer the phone, here's the voicemail script, you know, to go out there and leave. And the reason being is I want to, I want to eliminate the guesswork. Like I, I want to just make this as simplistic as impossible. The system is instructing me of what to do. It's telling me, you know, when to do it and, and tells me what to do. So I just need to get in and take action on the activity. It's already hard enough just to do the damn activities than to always have to sit there and think about this stuff. I want to have it effective and efficient, right? Um, you know, but then also, you know, don't just use these, like I'm going to use drip tasks for myself for all my calls, you know, um, and not just for leads, but think about like past clients. Okay. Like I, I have a past client, Markham is a past client. I add my past client drip, whether it's a buyer or seller, you know, I just celebrated close with them. It's automatically going to task me seven days post-close to call them to check in. It's going to task me 30 days post-close to check in. Then every 90 days, it's going to task me to call them for the next 20 years. You know, um, um, and as I mentioned earlier, not just thinking about these these different, you know, email, text and, and task drips, you know, for just general lead follow up. Think about detours and things that can happen. You know, I mentioned earlier, OK, I, I, maybe I set a buyer appointment with this lead and they know show me. All I have to do is go into my CRM, click a button. It's my buyer appointment set, no show follow -up drip, automatically triggers. It's 12 touches over 26 days, automatically emails them six times over the next 12 days, automatically tasks me six times over the next 26 days to call them, tells me what to say. I don't, it's a, it's a set it, forget it, not to think about, yeah, I still got to do the work, but I don't have to think about it. this ensures things don't slip through the cracks. Got the same thing. I go on a listing of presentation. Maybe I conduct it or I conduct that buyer consultation, but they don't sign. Okay. I've got it, you know, an appointment conducted, no sign follow drip. Like think of those different detours, right? Um, so, so, and then also, you know, um, like if you're doing any type of mailers, you know, so again, like this just makes it very simple. Like, okay, I, I have an expired letter that I sent out. It's highly effective. Um, where, okay, I, I send a letter day one every 21 days for the first six months, every six months for the next two years. Well, I just set up a drip for that. Just boom, here's send letter one, send letter two. You know, my short sales, you know, I know short sales are, you know, have been a thing in the past, but, you know, in the next year or two, they might make a comeback, you know, um, but to break that down, it's like, okay, I have a, a 10 mailer system. There's two, you know, two packages, eight postcards that happen over two weeks, or uh, uh, sorry, 10 weeks, you know, that get mailed out to them to get them to reach out to me. Well, then I just set a, a, a drip for that where it's just like, okay, mail package one, mail package two, whether so I can do it, my assistant can do it. So think about that and setting that, this is you putting those instructions in, feeding those instructions. And I get like, yeah, there's a little bit of effort to go in there and, and, and plug those in there and build those out. But once you feed it the right instructions, boom, man, it's just like, like you just show up and you just got to clear out your task queue every day and you do that, you are winning. All right. So then from there, 
Um, if your CRM allows for it and has it in there, you know, for me, I want to have a CRM that I can work everything in one centralized system. So I'm not having to work out of a multiple, you know, multitude of different systems, you know, so I want to be able to work my leads, my clients, my past clients, my under contracts, you know, so my transactions. So, you know, CRM that I haven't used, we have a very robust transaction management system in there. Um, and I go out there and do the same thing with all my transaction tasks. Okay. My listing input, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, here's step four, here's step five, here's step six, you know, my contract to close, whether it's a buyer or a seller, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, here's step four, you know, okay, listing closes, order down the sign, order down the lockbox, do this, do that, you know, so then when I input that transaction in there, then I just select the checklist, and then boom, and then it tells me all the tasks, let's just say it's, you know, I got 52 steps on this contract to close, it tells me what the due dates are based on the contract dates, when it's due, you know, what needs to be done, I that way I just don't forget. So make sure, you know, if you have a system that allows for that, if you're able to do that, do that there. If you don't have a system that allows for that, build out a checklist in Excel, build out, you know, something that keeps it on task where you're not, you know, forgetting shit and you don't have to think about it. You want to have a system, you know, a system-based business that you don't have to think about this, you know, okay, well then I'm going to set my daily property alerts inside my CRM. Uh, uh, you know, let's just say it's a buyer daily property alerts for the seller. I'm going to still send them property alerts, but you know, with solds, um, um, set those up. So that's happening through my system. You know, part of my follow-up protocol, mass emails, you know, recommend your CRM, which pretty much I think every CRM does have a mass email function and mass email feature, you know, but it saves a ton of time. You know, so like right now, if I want to mass email all my buyer leads and go through and tell them how right now is the best time to buy in the last three plus years that we've seen in our market and how we are very effectively, even though interest rates are up, getting our buyer clients right now 4% interest rates. So we're seeing the all time low affordability, you know, the, the best affordability. And the best time that we've seen to buy since, you know, you know, 2019 or pre 2019, dude, I can just, you know, select all my buyer leads, put together one email, you know, high variable data. So it put inserts their name, it looks customized to them, but I can send out 9,000 emails by just writing one, right? So, you know, mass emails can be huge. Um, uh, make sure when it comes to your CRM that you're, you're, um, taking the time to be very detailed in each contact record. So as you're following up, man, I'm going to take that time to log every call, log every conversation. You know, I'm taking that time to put that stuff in there and put those details in there. So it allows for more effective follow-up. So when I'm following up with them, I can focus on the connection. I can focus on the rapport. I can be more effective with that follow-up, but then I can always reference back. So like within, you know, my CRM, um, I can sit there and see, let's just say I had this closing. Well, I know what the lead source is, you know, and we're very detailed on that, which we've already talked about. I can go in there and see, okay, how many text messages were sent out? How many overall emails that were sent out? How many calls were logged? You know, so how many calls took place? How many conversations actually took place of those calls or those text messages? Because I can see the back and forth combos in there. Um, I can see how many appointments were set, you know, because we have an appointment setting feature um, um, that's inside there where we can log all those appointments, you know, so then that way I can carry that over to my spreadsheets and, and you know, ha have, but that data is all right there in front of me, um, um, you know, front of mine. Um, okay, so for drips, I already talked about, you know, thinking beyond just uh, regular follow up. Now, what I recommend if you guys want to is if you go to perfectstormdemo.com. So Perfect Storm is the system that I have that I use, full disclosure, I am a, an owner of the system, uh, um, you know, the owner of, of the platform. Um, in addition to using it for my real estate team, you know, I'm the owner of it, but perfectstormdemo.com, you don't need to opt in to watch anything, um, but that I have an hour demo of the system. And I'm not talking about this from a sales aspect, but through that demo, I'm going through and I'm showing my actual system, my actual setup. So you can see all of this stuff, like everything I'm referencing, you know, how my drips are set up, how my, how worked that contact record. So if you want to see a visual of this stuff, even if you use a different CRM, like you, you can just use that demo to kind of duplicate and copy that stuff over in your different CRM, you know, um, you know, and so forth um, from that. If you are looking for a CRM, you can you know, check it out there as well. Um, and uh, all my drips, all, all the scripts, all those drips uh, are all preloaded in there. So you don't have to worry about recreating any of this stuff. All right. So um, again, as I talked about earlier, the right systems allow you to optimize your effort and time. So tracking allows you to allocate your money and energy in the most effective way, right? But then the, the and, and tracking is a system. But again, when we look at tracking, that is allows us to allocate our time, energy, money, 
um, in the best ways and go out there and plan accordingly so we know what we need to be doing to win each and every single day. Then our CRM system allows us to complete those tasks in the most effective, efficient way to get the highest conversion rates to stay on task to ensure things don't get missed. And when you put these two things together, this is how, yeah, you can double your lead gen, um, um, double your, your lead follow-up activities, or maybe you need to more than double it, you know, because if you double it, that's just going to get you the same results right now in this market. So you might have to increase them by, you know, more than double, you might have to, you know, do double and a half or, or you know, whatever that, that percentage comes out there to being. But if you have these dialed in, it doesn't necessarily translate into working double the hours or even working more hours. It doesn't necessarily translate into having to spend more money because it's allowed or, or more time because it allows you to cut out the waste scale up only what's working, focus on only what's working, you know, cut out wasted ad spend, only focus on the things that are actually getting you those results. All right, so you're going to have to work hard and work smart. But for those of you that are willing to work hard, and work smart are going to go absolutely dominate 2023. I hope that you found this helpful. Again, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, drop me a comment, say hi. I personally respond to each and all of those comments. Also, make sure to check out gsdmode.com. For uh, I've got a bunch of free training, free resources, my free ebook on there. I think I have a free disc assessment tool on there too. Um, that's all all free, no strings attached with any of that stuff. You can um, you know connect with the podcast, all that bullshit on there. Gsdmode.com. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. Keep crushing it. Keep up all the amazing work. Truly appreciate all your support, and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.